So with this session, we're going to be dealing with molarity practice problems. There are some problems that are super easy, or at least straightforward, and then there are some that require a little more thought process. And this one, this one's a little more straightforward. So like anything else, we're going to find out what our variables are, and then we're going to deal with those. So it says, what is the concentration? Well, concentration is just another word for molarity, so it's going to be my capital M. Then my volume is given to me at 1,250 milliliters. And it gives you straight out the number of moles, which is really pretty friendly, which is 1.35 moles of calcium chloride. When I evaluate my units, the only thing that needs to be done before I get going is I need to go from milliliters to liters. And I'm going to move that decimal three places to the left. So now it's going to be 1.25 liters. When I look at my formula, I'm going to use that triangle. Why? Because, well, I like to. So I'm going to have molarity equals mole over liter. As a reminder, you're going to cover up what you're looking for. And so your formula is going to be mole over liter. And I'm going to fill in what I have. So that's going to be 1.35 mole over 1.25 liters. Once you run those numbers, it's going to give you 1.08 molar. And I'm going to put that in a bracket and then I'm going to throw what compound it is in there as well to remind me of what exactly it is I'm dealing with. So my molarity is 1.08 molar calcium chloride. In this next example, you, it says how many moles of potassium chloride are needed to create a 750 milliliter 2.25 molar solution. It's a little bit different than what you've, what you've seen before. How many moles so now we're just not looking for molarity, we're looking for moles. You're given a volume at 750 milliliters. And you're also given a target molarity, which is 2.25 molar KCL. I evaluate my variables. There is one thing that I need to change. I need to go from, from milliliter to liter. Notice that tends to be a trend. And I'm going to look at my formula again. Bear with me. I'm looking for mole. I'm going to cross that out. And that's going to leave me with mole equals molarity multiplied by liter. Now another way that I can write that is going to be mole equals mole over liter multiplied by liter. And that looks weird, but just bear with me and I'll show you why this works. So I'm looking for my number of moles, and I'm going to look at the molarity that I was given, which is 2.25 molar. And instead of using that capital M, I'm going to use mole over liter. And then I'm going to multiply it by my liters which is 0.75 liters. And hopefully now you can see why I canceled it or why I changed out my, my variables. And that's so my liters can cancel. And so with this problem, I'm left with only one unit and that matches out what I want. Once I run those numbers, I get 1.69 mole of potassium chloride, and that's my value that I'm looking for. So in that case, you've changed up the triangle a little bit. You still have to convert your volume, but all in all, not too terrible. This last example for this session is a little more complicated, and these are the ones that normally give a few of you headaches. So when you look at it, it's how many grams of magnesium chloride are needed to create a 500 milliliter 
molar solution of magnesium chloride. Okay. So again, we start with what we're given. And it's asking me for grams. And that's not really part of my, my formula, but we'll roll with it and see what happens. And then we've got to create a 500 milliliter. So there's my volume. That looks a little more what I'm used to. Looks like a little more what I'm used to. And then I've got my molarity, which is given to me at 3.5 molar. So I'm going to go back to my formula. And the only thing I can really do with this formula right now is to find mole because I've got molarity and I have liters. So just like in the previous problem, when I'm looking for mole, I'm going to cross that out. And so I'm going to have number of moles equals molarity times liter. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. So I've got my 3.5 molar. And instead of using the capital M, I'm going to do mole over liter. So I can double check myself. And oh, I forgot to change my milliliters to liters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so now I've got my 0.5 liter. My liters cancel. Once I run those numbers, I've got a mole of 1.75. So my number of moles is 1.75. Okay, well that's cool. But it didn't ask me for moles. It asked me for grams. And this is where things get a little bit different. So to finish out this problem, I'm going to make sure that I've got my substance. And if you remember way back to stoichiometry, well, you've got to go from mole to mass. All right. So I've got 1.75 mole of magnesium chloride. And I need to change that to grams of magnesium chloride. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to set it up. This should, this should, um, start ringing a couple of bells for you. Since I have moles in the numerator on the left, I'm going to need to put moles in the denominator. And then I'm going to put grams up in the numerator. And I'm basically making a conversion factor. So one mole equals some number of grams. So now I'm going to have to do a molar mass problem. So for magnesium chloride, I have one magnesium, and I have two chlorines. And when I look up the mass of magnesium for my periodic table, it's going to be 24.31 grams. And for chlorine, it's going to be 35.45 grams. So I'm going to multiply all that out. So I've got 24.31 grams. And then for my, for my chlorine, it's going to be 70.90 grams. And then if you remember, you're going to add those together. So once I do my addition, my molar mass is going to be 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride. And then I've got to double check myself because, well, I do. My moles of magnesium chloride are going to cancel because I have one in the numerator and one in the denominator. I want to make sure that my only unit left is my grams of magnesium chloride, which is exactly what I've got. Once I do my math, I should get 166.62 grams of magnesium chloride. So then I need to go back and just double check. Did I answer what the question asked? How many grams of magnesium chloride are needed? Well, that's what I have. So my final answer 
is 162.62 grams of magnesium chloride. I hope this helped you guys. Have a great day.